This is the uh, operations committee meeting of the uh, Board of School Directors of Upper Dublin School District. It is Thursday, May 18th, 2017, and it's a minute past 6 uh, p.m. Welcome to all, and I'd like to call the meeting to order. Uh, first, um, are there any announcements or communications? Not this evening. Okay. And uh, that brings us to presentations. And uh, the first presentation is um, summer projects. My computer and uh, that's all right, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We don't have a presentation yet. Yeah, well, this may be different. Okay. Yep. Okay. I just want to go over a uh, yeah. few of the summer projects that we had uh, are looking to do in the schools this year. Um, go through by order by school. Uh, one of the common themes, uh, floor replacements. Uh, Fort Washington, uh, we're looking at rooms 101, 102, and 210, and that requires abatement of the floor tile mastic and placing new VCT floors down. Uh, we also discovered a uh, boys' room, <laughs> the one that's actually behind the gymnasium, uh, the cafeteria area, uh, the floor has a buckle in it and uh, some of the tiles are starting to pop and it's a tripping hazard, so we're going to address that. Uh, another common theme with uh, the school is we're looking to do some more automatic door controls. Right now, anybody uh, with accessibility issues uh, would have to pull the door. There's no automatic door opening at uh, many of our schools, so we're looking to do that as well. Uh, some other items we're looking to do, Fort Washington painting rooms that we're going around addressing the rooms that where the painting needs to occur. Uh, playground equipment maintenance, uh, starting to see some rust come through on some of the stuff, so we're going to sand that down, paint it, have a nice smooth surface again, and adding playground mulch, uh, something we started last year. Uh, our levels <laughs> have sunken down. We're trying to bring them up to make a nice cushion if anybody were to fall. Uh, again, Jarrett Town, uh, looking to do more floor replacement. Uh, rooms 40 and 41 of our conference rooms and uh, the storage room for the gym. Again, it's abating the, the floor tile that's there. Uh, happy to say that all the main hallways have already been done and all the classrooms uh, no longer have asbestos floor tile. Uh, we're just mopping up some of the small areas now. Uh, one thing we discovered this year, uh, we had meter, water meter changes by Aqua, and when they went into our meter pit, our, our piping was so rusty they couldn't adjust any of the valves, uh, so that needs to be addressed over the summer. Uh, they need to get into the pit. We're going to have to find a contractor, get into the pit, and replace a small section of the piping and the valve so that if we have any issues, we can't <laughs> shut the water off to the school. Uh, there's a girls' room uh, across from room 14 that uh, some of the partitions, the toilet stalls, are in poor condition. Uh, we want to get in there and replace those uh, toilet partition stalls. And also there's a, uh, the one handicapped accessible stall does not have a door it was kind of a space created to make room for a wheelchair. It's really not appropriate, so uh, that's something we've addressed, and uh, the reconfiguring of the new two of the partitions will give us a handicapped stall in that school. Uh, again, we're going to look at uh, installation automatic doors, some various painting, uh, playground equipment maintenance again, and adding the playground mulch. <laughs> Maple Glen, uh, some outside work that needs to be done. Uh, the exterior tiles under the windows, if you ever drive past the, the classroom windows, have a decorative tile underneath. Uh, moisture over the years has gotten in, a lot of the tiles have come loose and popped off and are laying in the ground. So uh, we're looking to address that issue. Uh, sidewalks, uh, we have several cracks, especially at the, the main entrance. Some of the uh, handicap uh, curb cuts are cracked and starting to crumble. We have some holes in other spots, so we're looking to make those repairs this year. Uh, again, looking at the common themes, the door controls, painting, and uh, playground maintenance are all part of this list as well. Thomas Fitzwater is where the, uh, the big work is uh, going to be this year. Uh, we have the contractor in place. Uh, we've just met this afternoon, or a kickoff meeting going over uh, the equipment, the time frame, and his schedule. And this is a project, uh, last day of school, we're going to hit the ground running. Uh, this is a complete new electric service, a uh, new transformer out in the courtyard, new emergency generator. And this will add to the capacity of the school. Right now we don't, do not have enough capacity to uh, add anything else to the school as needed. Uh, kind of, we have to 
steal from one area uh, to provide for another. So this will address all those issues, plus give us a new up-to-date emergency generator and systems. The floor replacements in this school, uh, we're looking at rooms 10 and 12, and 25 and 25A, again, removing the floor tile mastic and adding new tiles down. And to continue on some of the work that's been done in previous years at Thomas Fitzwater, the casework is in poor condition uh, where the countertops, the sinks are in the classrooms. So rooms 10 and 12 will be replacing those as well. Uh, part of the electric project also, we needed to create another wall to hang some panels, electric panels. And right now we have a, uh, an area in the storeroom where IT equipment is, and we're going to put the wall around the IT equipment so that way we'll also be able to condition the space where the IT equipment is in and make room for our panels. That's awesome. That's, uh, the electric is all part of the electric installation and generator project. Uh, the air conditioning will all be created by our in-house staff. Again, at Thomas Fitzwater, <laughs> same as the other schools, the uh, card controls, painting, and playground maintenance as well. Middle school, uh, not as much going on. We do want to look at some automatic door controls there, uh, both the main building and the annex. We have rooms that need to be painted, uh, including some rooms that are being changed over usage-wise. Some cabinets are going to be moved, uh, room 403. And uh, in 403, when we do move the cabinets, the carpet that's underneath is in very poor condition, uh, tripping. So we're going to replace that little bit of carpet in that room as well. Uh, high school, we do have some work here, even though it's new. We do have the sidewalk repairs. Uh, the township has had that on our punch list. We're going to start addressing some of those issues. Uh, so just where the concrete has deteriorated in some of our exterior sidewalks. Uh, a couple areas out on Block Ash Avenue and one right at the entrance across from Hawthorne Lane on Fort Washington Avenue. Uh, just a little bit of crumbling. It was just uh, something that happened with that batch of concrete that we weren't able to control. Uh, we also want to look at some permanent lights for the Lock Ash ramp. Uh, we've had tripping hazards out before. These are the ramps that go around the flagpole down to the sidewalk. Uh, right now we put some low-cost uh, LED lights that are on the wall, and they do help, but they don't last through the nights. And we, we'd like to put something more permanent into that space and also take care of the uh, issue that we don't have any lights on our flags at night. Uh, we need to remove the American flag each night because we do not have a light, and we, this would be a good opportunity to change that. Um, we are going to do some painting spots that need it. Uh, some of the aplex walls are, are quite marked up, and uh, the cleaning isn't getting the marks off anymore, so we want to touch up that paint. Uh, looking at some pool repairs, uh, some deficiencies that we that are being addressed. Uh, we've started our, our our work with Deep Run Aquatics as an advisor for our pool maintenance, and so we're starting to address some of those issues. Uh, some of the pool heater issues, some recommendations from our engineer uh, that we can change the piping. Those are all things that we can do this summer as well. Uh, another complaint we've had we want to look into also is uh, dirt in our baseball fields. It's been quite some time since we added some dirt to the infields. So we're starting to get a little bit of a lip uh, where the infield meets the outfield and it just the ball might hit that and uh, change directions and catch somebody off guard. So we, we do want to look at that as well. So those are all the uh, projects we had scheduled from the schools. And this is all in addition to the work we do every year uh, where the custodians go in, do a deep clean in each room, strip the floors, new coats of wax, cleaning the furniture and lockers. Okay, thank you. Um, are there any comments or questions? Uh, if, if I could, at, at every of the elementary schools, uh, Bob mentioned that we're looking at the playground equipment and the mulch and uh, addressing those concerns uh, will make um, the Utica inspector quite happy at the end of the summer. So moving and, and trying to uh, take care of um, some issues that we've had in the past. All right, thank you. Um, next is, uh, are there any uh, minutes? Uh, yes, the minutes from our April 20th meeting have uh, been circulated and shared. If you have any comments, please let Brooke know. Um, the board members can see them at this time. And they will be approved, I believe, on June the 5th, uh, if not then, <laughs> June 14th. Okay, thank you. Uh, next is the facility reports. The first one is the classroom. AV refresh. Yeah, I'll stand at the podium. Okay.
spelling. Spelling counts in technology. It's just one of those things. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I'm just bringing up a uh, part of a presentation that uh, was at our finance meeting in the fall uh, when I originally uh, proposed the budget. Um, so uh, what you see here is a proposal for the classroom uh, AV refresh. And up in that first slide, you see uh, the difference between on the left-hand side, uh, the new classroom projection system, uh, touch interactivity, projector, et cetera, and what most of our teachers live with. So on the, on the right-hand side, that's actually what it really looks like when that teacher is trying to teach math. Um, you can kind of guess at, at what's happening. So it's really great for developing inference skills for our students. Um, <laughs> but, but other than that, it's, it's really hard to teach with. So the uh, traditional model, if we were to go ahead and, and refresh our teachers with new versions of the equipment that they have, um, we'd be looking at spending around uh, $4,500 um, per classroom. But instead of having a tethered workstation for teachers, uh, we have an opportunity to also refresh and move to, to support a more modern practice, right? So it becomes not a tethered <coughs> workstation for the teacher where they're tied to the front of the room, but a classroom workstation that's really about uh, being able to project any number of devices in the classroom, making thinking visible, a Bluetooth keyboard and trackpad so that teacher is more mobile, having less hardware in the room so you have less points of failure, right? So something goes wrong, um, you know, and, and the typical thing has been the interactive boards. When the interactivity is a $200 module that's built into the projector, if something goes wrong with that, that's $200, not thousands of dollars. Um, so that's what we'll move forward with. Originally in the fall when I proposed uh, the budget and we talked about having a phased approach because this, uh, that space had originally, like this, this functionality in the classroom had come through various PTO, especially outside of the high school and the middle school and the elementary schools. A lot of that had come through PTOs um, originally and it's very dated, right? So we needed to have a comprehensive system since this is so core to teaching and learning for one, the district to refresh it and then have a sustainable cycle and it becomes a line item. So for the next few years, it'll be a slightly bigger line item and then it comes down as we sustain over time. And we don't know what the tech will be. I can tell you that by the time we get to the high school, it will not be this, right? Um, already the price point on touch monitors that have the PC integrated is coming down, down, down. And at some point, it'll be a break even. Uh, but it just becomes a line item that we hold. The original amount that I budgeted uh, for this year was 328, uh, 328,000. So the total now is 246, right? So over several months, I am very aggressive with vendors. You know, here's my proposal, and then sort of make them fight for our business and bring that cost down. Um, so it's about $80,000 that we've brought down. And there's some spaces that curriculum and I want to use that in, in a few weeks at, at committee. I will be coming with a proposal for a platform called Schoology, right, well, that adds additional functionality. So there is that kind of negotiated trade. Um, but it, it's, you know, serendipitous that I was able to negotiate it down because rainy days come and that's part of the, the next <laughs> presentation. Um, but let's uh, first, if there are, you know, any specific questions you have about um, this, the installation that we've done so far, the, the experience of teachers, and we can talk about that. Any questions? I have a quick question on the quote. Um, I think I know the answer, but one of the items on the quote, the second to last one, the title is fill in this area. Right. That's the most expensive item on the quote at 13,000, or second most. I think it's in the installation based on the description below. Yeah, That's the labor for installation. Right, right, okay. across all of those units. Right. Okay. Yeah. yeah, and that's just one of those, you have a financial software that's you know kicking out this space where someone was supposed to fill in a blank. Yeah. So we're still on target to complete the change in so, 2020. Yeah. So so this gets us uh, with that original <laughs> target that in 2020 is when we will have completed all the buildings except the high school, and then we need to to target the high school. Except the high school. Does the high school have different technology? So the high school was the first time the district said 
we're going to make this investment uniformly um, in, in a building systemically, right? So all of our classrooms here in the high school have the same technology. It's really old. Um, unfortunately, when a lot of it was ordered, it, it was ordered and came when the high school was still being built. Um, so, you know, ideally, uh, lesson learned, right, and we can move forward with any kind of construction or renovations that we do in the future. We have a line item for the technology, but we buy the technology a few months before we need to install the technology, right? And, and so that way, it's, one, it's current, and then we have our warranties are current, et cetera, et cetera. That, that will impact the, uh, the bidding process yes. and all of that. And, yeah. you know, that's, that's part of, you know, the problem when you're trying to build a new school. Uh, you need to have competitive bids, and you need to make sure you're staying within budget, especially on the high school project. We had to. So uh, it was just the nature, the nature of that. There were, I think, a few areas where we knew the technology was going to change. It may have been projectors mm -hmm. in the auditorium and stuff like that where we held off until the last minute but systemically throughout the building we had to make it part of the bid package yeah which was unfortunate yeah, yeah. the stuff's old already which is almost hard to believe but that was the <laughs> practice and it was not that long ago but that was standard practice and now standard practice has shifted appreciating that technology is, is too fluid of a target mm -hmm. yeah any other comments or questions on this particular item? So it's okay to move that along to the full board? Okay, great. Right. If I may, just very quickly, I really appreciate um, Phil taking the stance. Um, we are buying things and using CoStar's bid uh, or PEPM, but um, he, you can negotiate with uh, the vendors, and uh, $80,000 savings or change um, is a terrific uh, way to go forward, even though he's spending that money, I hear. But. <laughs> yeah, it, <laughs> don't, yeah, do not get me wrong, right? As soon as I, if I can make that save then, and stay on target with, uh, with equity across the district, um, then there are multiple opportunities to, to put that back into some other part of building efficiency for teachers or opportunities for students. And, yeah. mm -hmm. That's Enjoy great, that. Phil. Yeah. Thank you. Um, the next item is the telephone system. Okay, so, uh, so this one has a nice little story to it, and, and you have uh, links through to the proposals, and, and um, we, we've read the story, but to, to encapsulate it, uh, our phone system, the newest components of our phone system are over 11 years old. It's a mix of digital and analog. Um, and the heart of that phone system, and the phone system is a Toshiba phone system, is your voicemail server. So it does much more than voicemail, it's the smart switchboard for everything. Right? So calls come in and essentially they go out to a specific number. If they're not picked up, they switch over to voicemail. Uh, so our voicemail server is, uh, has been failing its past end of life. We were able to spend a few thousand dollars last year to repair it. Um, and now we, every couple of weeks, have to reset it. And so that's the sign that the device is going to die. So. Normally, we would have said, all right, we're going to do an RFP for next year for phones. And um, then if it dies, right, you know, within that time, we, we might have to, as an emergency, go and, and buy an upgrade for it. Um, knowing that we were headed that direction last year, I wanted to get some sort of lay of the land. For our district, our size, what would it cost to move to a modern system? And I looked with a couple of vendors and a couple of different options, uh, leasing as opposed to owning. Um, and so total cost of ownership over five years uh, was between five and $600,000 uh, aside from a recurring $30,000 annual fee, right? Really expensive. Um, and so uh, we, Moved on from that, said, okay, well, we don't have to make that decision yet, but that's scary. Um, Springfield is in the same situation, Springfield Township. Right? <coughs> Old phone system, um, they, every time it rains, they don't have phone service. I think we're familiar with that experience as well. Um, and so they are been shopping around. So serendipitously, uh, the two of us tech directors found IU17, which has decided to take the markup that happens in the commercial space out of the equation um, to do collaborative pricing. 
uh, working through CoStars and Pepham. So they're doing the RFP so that they can buy the hardware. And then we can partner with them in a collaborative pricing agreement. Um, so giving us the equipment at cost, a reasonable installation fee, and then a service agreement um, that is half of what our monthly service agreement is with Verizon. Um, so we suddenly come from five to six hundred thousand dollars to a hundred thousand dollars, hundred and eight thousand dollars for all the units we have with uh, a nine hundred dollar monthly fee as opposed to a two thousand dollar monthly fee. So it's a and we get all the bells and whistles that we're lacking right now, right? So for example, if a teacher dials 911 from a classroom, uh, there's a bit of a guessing game at dispatch. Where is it coming from? Where, you know, sometimes in the district it shows the building, doesn't show the building. Uh, here it would show the classroom that it's coming from while simultaneously ringing the principal's phone and the secretary's phone, right? One call, the administration is alerted, Simultaneously, dispatch knows what's going on, right? And that's just the, the beginning of, of that kind of functionality. The ability for a all <laughs> voicemail to go to every user's email, right? That's a tremendous efficiency. Um, the ability for an administrator to have an app on their phone and to be able to answer and receive phone calls as though they were coming from their office phone and send phone calls as though they're coming from their office phone, right? And so. And you can be on a field trip, and you can still have your, your phone extension coming to you um, securely and privately. So uh, there's a lot of, you know, this is the benefit of a modern phone system. Um, one of the advantages of working with this kind of system as well, voice over IP, is that we don't, we don't need to do any infrastructure upgrades. So the phone's daisy chain with the classroom computer. I can take the jack that used to go into the wall from the computer, plug it into the phone, plug the phone into the computer. Right, um, so we don't have to do any additional investment there. So, at the same time, right, this is not budgeted for. <coughs> Facilities has not budgeted for the phones. Technology has not budgeted for the phones. Um, and normally we wouldn't. We would have done the RFP, except next Thursday is the day that Toshiba is officially out of the 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 phone business. Right, um, if we don't buy a replacement for $20,000 for that voicemail server now, um, we can't after Thursday. If we bought it now, we would have you know, service and warranty and et cetera that Toshiba would have to honor. Uh, but it, it this tight spot we found ourselves in a few weeks ago of saying, do we spend 20,000, do we spend a fifth of the cost of a new phone system to buy a couple of years with an antiquated phone system? Um, so that's you know, where we were and we you know, equate this to home ownership, right? It's, it's, not money anybody's ever excited to spend, um, but it's a necessity. So now I'll open it to your questions and discussion, right? This was put as a discussion item. Just, just for clarification for my own head. So the existing system is a legacy phone system like copper, the whole, okay. Yeah. And going to voice over IP through grand stream systems, does that eat up bandwidth? bandwidth? Yeah, so we... Uh, the amount of bandwidth that a, a phone system takes up is negligible. Okay. Right, it's tiny. And these phones, some of the phones, right, are, are Lexus phones, and they have the ability to do video conferencing and everything right. else. And I was like, like, no, 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 right? Like, uh, I can video conference on my Chromebook. I, I don't need that on my phone, right? So we won't need that feature. Yeah. So, okay. And we have plenty of bandwidth to spare. So a couple things come to mind when we're talking about phone systems. Um, and so you mentioned 911, E911 functionality, improved functionality. Um, but in order to make that work, my concern is that with copper, we weren't dependent on power or any of that stuff. Um, so our, is, is every component that is in the chain for an E911 call properly protected and redundant right so that's and the, and let me just preface yeah. that I mean that's a real concern um, it's likely the case most organizations find when you are thinking about going over to VoIP and you have these concerns about e911 that if you actually look at the functionality that you get with your e911 calls now it's probably not as good as you think it is um, 
but that still, I, I have that concern that we're adding a dependency on infrastructure that may not be ready to have that level of dependency on it. Right. So the the switch itself um, has to have backup power, right? And so we have backup power in our server room. Um, but that's a good question that I, I don't know the answer to. The, the path from my telephone, right? If I lose power, is the path from my, to, from my telephone dead, right? Uh, in my house, uh, I don't have a copper phone anymore, right? So I, you know, but those a new modern wireless phone, that wouldn't work for me if I, if I lost yeah. power. A similar concern comes up frequently with soft clients. You mentioned soft clients on an, uh, I apologize for any jargon I use here. I'm, I'll try not to. Um, <laughs> um, so a soft client meaning software phone. It's not actually a physical phone kind of yep. to a wire, but a soft client like it's something running on your, on your, on your smartphone right. is a soft client. Um, <laughs> Does E911 work properly for in that circumstance? And if not, we have to make sure all the training, and that's okay if it's not, but we need to make sure that the training are, is in place, that when people need to call 911, this is how, actually how you have to sure. do it. And, and, and likely, you know, in the same way, right, if, if there's power out and you have to call 911, what's yeah. the protocol? Right, right. right. that would become part of Right, that's a solution. Yeah. If you can't make everything appropriately redundant, et cetera, then documentation can solve, the, yeah. and training can solve the problem. Um, another thing, thought is that um, generally when at this point replacing a phone system that was probably you know purchased how long ago um, and designed longer ago um, the use of phones was very different then than it is now uh, in general phone use is less but it's not just less it's sort of the workflow it's how do you use a phone when do you use a phone when are you really dependent on it when is there a, a reasonable approach to not use a phone maybe you don't need as many phones um, maybe there's just a different way of working we could do instead of you know and, and chop off a whole you know need for phones that we, or, or way of working and, and with, with this with this first round <coughs> I wanted to get a price of if I replaced every unit um, so that's our starting point and then again, so then if we do move forward, the next is to do a, a very thorough vetting of workflow to see what, where do we really need that many phones. When I walk into the main office at Sandy Run, one, two, three, four, four phones in a space a quarter of the size of this room. Do we all need to have that many phones simultaneously? And they are used simultaneously, right? Yeah. Yeah. And so that's the beginning of, of that discussion. Where can we cut? Um, and I don't know if we have anything with like ACD functionality, um, which is like, you, you know, a, a call bank, yeah, call center kind of oh, yeah. model yeah. where one, you know, someone calls a number and six phones ring and someone has to pick it up. And, and I don't it, know if we do that kind of thing, but maybe we don't need to do it anymore. Maybe we don't, right? Yeah. I mean, uh, this does have, you know, you can create your specific rings, uh, your circles. Right, yeah. so if it doesn't get picked up here, it goes to here. If it doesn't get picked up here, it goes to here. And, it, and that would talk to our <coughs> class system. So, you know, if someone's at the door and they're buzzing and it doesn't, the secretary's not there, it goes to the next secretary. And it goes to the next, yeah. right? You can go through a ring of people. Yeah. yeah. So just those thoughts, I'm not, I don't have the answer to that, but it's just something to consider is, you know, uh, workflow changes may reduce the need, reduce the cost, reduce the dependency on technologies, et cetera. And a, and a large part of the cost really is a, a phone in every classroom. Um, and those phones may only get used once a month. Right. But when it's used, it's it really needs to be used. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It just needs to be, there's an emergency, we need to get that teacher, that student, right? right. Yeah. yeah, and those emergency uses, I mean, you can envision a soft client running on the, the thing we talked about on the previous presentation would solve many of the needs, but when you when you have a 911 situation, it needs to be something really natural. You pick up the phone, you actually press three buttons, you yeah. know, kind of thing. Yeah. So your worst case right now would be $108,000 to replace everything. And yeah. you're, you're saying at this point you just want to know if you have the go-ahead to pursue this further? So, I mean, we can pursue it, right? But, but to the go-ahead and... Um, a lot of this work has to be a collaboration between technology and facilities, <coughs> uh, right? Because this is not inclusive of our alarms. This is not inclusive of our elevators. IU-17 
likes to shy away from that because every municipality has different regulations about what you need in that space across Pennsylvania. Um, so the next piece is we are, it's just a commitment to say we're not going to buy a backup, we're not going to spend 20000 on a backup server. Right. Uh, we realize there's a, a leaking roof, right? Let's just use that analogy for the phones, right? And so we have to do something. We have a viable alternative to spending half a million dollars. Um, and so then the next step would be uh, coordination between Bob and myself with IU17 um, and doing a workflow inventory right, of our buildings. So classrooms aside, main offices, how many units do we need? Um, and, and part of it is our users not knowing what they don't know. So first, the two of us would work with IU17 and also some other schools. So we have uh, Rich Oliver and I at Springfield. He and I have a reference list. We've divided the reference list and we've started calling the references. So we're asking them questions about their experience, vetting IU17, but also, you know, what would you do differently if you could? All right, and, and especially in terms of, like, do we need to replace all of our phones? Um, because we might have functionality built in here where we really don't need mm -hmm. all of those phones replaced. Okay. Um, so it seems that we're not going to spend the $20,000. So is this something that um, if we are going to pursue a new phone system that um, the target would be for opening of school in the fall? Yeah, I, that would be, you know, it would have to become a summer project, and that, right. would, be the, that would be the target. So... Um, um, it would be I'm just trying to, to get do the it timing elsewhere. down yeah. Um, yeah. because you you guys have some work to do to to understand what the scope of the project is, and then it's a matter of getting the approvals and lead time and all of those sorts of things. So you need to kind of guide us as to when right. when the decision has to be made. You know, and I think a best case scenario, given the timing of our meetings, would be july i think there's a turnaround between now and when you have executive session in june it, I, I believe it's too tight to, to really vet out and, and make sure but by july we could have that vetted out that might mean that there's a, a changeover that's happening in september right because iu 17 has got a limited staff the cost involves mm -hmm. installation and setup and configuration and so right, it might not be ready for the start of the school year but it would be better to have, early in the school year, a dependable phone system. Is there uh, much chaos that would be involved in a changeover uh, while school is in session? I don't think so, because we, we don't have to do any uh, hardware switches with our existing hardware. There's one, one of the biggest, um, in terms of, there would be a training piece, right, for, for faculty. Uh, the other piece is that in some of our classrooms, the phone is located by the door. Um, in this situation, the phone would have to be located by wherever the PC is in the classroom. So that's a switch. Um, it, it means, you know, we are used to being able to hop into any classroom and reach around the door, right? Mm -hmm. And now it's a culture shift to hop in the classroom and where is the PC. In the classrooms where we do this refresh, PC's not there anymore, so the phone will be near wherever the jack was for the mm -hmm. PC. Um, but for the actual interruption in the classroom, it's come in and plug in a new phone. It's just going to be sitting there powered on, and, and you're good to go. Isn't, isn't it likely the case that with this phone system that we're going to have to do all of it together? Yes. So I would say yes, there will be disruption and to, to do it all. Basi yeah. Basically to do it well and to make voicemail work for everybody and everything. This is sort of an all-in-one day kind of activity. Yeah, I mean, you could set it all up and it's just going to be off until yeah, it's we turn over. it on. It's a, yeah. Yeah. And we can provide training for everybody mm -hmm. before we, yeah. Right. Big switches. I, I do have another question. The 108000 is that after the savings from the classroom AV refresh is applied, or is that? So no, right, so one of the things is that we're not looking at it as one pocket or the other, right, because it's, yeah, the, the school district's budget is one pie. Right. Um, but that, like, that 80,000 that I, I saved, like, well, there's 14, 15,000 that curriculum and I want to spend on, on school G. The other stuff hasn't really been spent yet. Um, there's going to be some places where I went into a room where the spreadsheet said, this room has a dead and dying projector. And I walked in and saw that it was a tiny little room for five special education students, a reading center. 
uh, with you know, $4,000 worth of hardware when all they needed was a $600 monitor. Right, so, so we're doing some of those switches right. and that hasn't been accounted for yet. Um, I haven't consumed all 80,000. It's just I'm not gonna spend everything in the pie. Some of it will go and, and get applied towards this. I assume that the rest, because we don't want to impact the, the programs that we anticipated right. for curricular wise, it's gonna have to come out of fund balance, right? right. Um, and that's why fund balances exist, but that's hard when you're planning for a capital project in the future as well, right? So that's, that's, but you know, I always use that analogy of home ownership. Yes, I'm saving for a car and my AC unit went. Oh, there's always something. Right, yeah. so now I'm gonna either buy not the same car I wanted or wait a little longer for the car, right? It's that kind of choices, yeah. Okay. If, uh, if we can, um, have the decision faster so that we have more lead time. It would be helpful, I think. And there may not be a considerable difference to board members, whether whether it's 108,000 or 95,000 or something like that, as far as the de decision points concerned. It could be that the uh, recommendation could be framed earlier with a not to exceed 108,000. And if you come in lower, great. But that would free you up to be able to you know, pull the trigger whenever you're ready. I mean, we certainly could do that, and we could either move that forward for, uh, that would be the June executive session, right? A June legislative meeting, June. probably June 14th. I mean, that's what I meant, legislative <laughs> yes. meeting, right. So if we wanted to move that forward now, right, then we could say $108,000 is the cap, and certainly Bob and I can then work to, to bring it under that. Uh, I would recommend that. that. Mark? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I think that might be a way to go so that we're not stuck at the end of the summer trying to get this done, and really, it'd be great if everything was done. So when the teachers show up, you can train them, and it's it's a lot less chaotic. So, okay. I do have one one more question. You mentioned elevator phones, emergency phones, um, in elevators which are required by law. Um, do we also do we have blue light emergency phones? The sort of outdoor emergency. I don't. Do we have any of those anywhere? No. I don't think we do. Okay. All right, good. No. That's the other sort of thing that are often bundled with, uh, with elevator phones. Yeah. Yeah, you see them on college campuses, for example. Or, yeah. Yeah, and it, it might be that we we stay with pot lines for that. It's that's going to be. I'm going to leave that to to Bob and. Um, yeah. Township to to work with. Well, right now we have the capability, and something we we do want to do. Uh, and it, this is perfect timing. Is it's acceptable now to use cellular monitoring for fire alarms and burglar alarms before we were required to pay for two separate phone lines. Uh, with the cellular monitoring, those phone lines can go away. Uh, we can do that with our burglar fire. Uh, it's a slight increase in the monitoring fee, but the price that you save from not having the copper into the building, it, it's a win-win situation. Uh, there is also technology I'm looking at now to do the same with the elevators, uh, where they they use cellular monitoring with the elevators that would go to the alarm company and the alarm company to make the appropriate notifications. Cool. Okay. Any other questions on this item? Okay. All right, great. Thank you. Uh, next is uh, bid results. We had gone out to bid for the asbestos abatement and uh, uh, and tile removal. Uh, so what they're going to do is uh, they'll pull the tiles off the floors in the classrooms, and they'll remove the mastic because a lot of the uh, the mastic that held the floor tiles down was asbestos-containing materials. Uh, we were using environmental uh, uh, element environmental solutions for a consultant on this. They helped us put this bid spec together and run it out. Um, we were very happy with the results. We were expecting pricing uh, per square foot in the three dollar to four dollar range. Uh, the low bid came in from Sargent Enterprises at twelve thousand dollars for the project. Uh, these were the rooms I had mentioned before. Um, 
in my earlier presentation with the exception of room 210. Uh, that will be brought up later on uh, tonight. Uh, but Sergeant Enterprises came in lowest 12,000. Uh, first capital installation was at 13,900. Prism response 18,929. Uh, Penn's contracting was at 20,600. And Bristol Environmental 22,200 with Plymouth Environmental coming in the highest at 23,000. Uh, we have worked with uh, Sergeant Enterprises uh, quite a bit in the past. They've done nice work. Uh, they did all the work for us, uh, quite a bit of work last year uh, for all the, the hallways uh, that they had taken care of at, uh, at Jarrettown and uh, Thomas Fitzwater. Uh, the, the work was, was well done and on time. Uh, they also gave us a unit pricing that we were very happy with uh, for just removing floor tile mastic. Also, we have some rooms uh, that have carpet in it. Uh, it's a carpet over top of the floor tile and mask as well. And then we do have some fittings around the district, so we asked for unit pricing for that. Uh, and one more that Element Environmental wanted to put in for unit pricing was uh, site mobilization in case we decide we needed to bring them back at another point in the summer to do work, what their mobilization costs would be. But that's not something we're expecting to do. We're just interested in seeing the pricing. Good, good. Um, any questions on this item? All right, so we'll be moving this along to the legislative uh, for uh, approval. All right, um, next is a change order. This is, we are very happy with the pricing uh, where it came in at. Uh, we intentionally left the scope a little low just to make sure that we, we weren't uh, pricing ourselves out of a project. Uh, with the pricing coming in as low as... Uh, as it did, especially with the, the uh, unit pricing for, for square footage charges, uh, we want to put room 210 back into the project at Fort Washington Elementary. It's a 1,060 square foot room, and it is a room that has carpet over top of the asbestos tile and mastic. Uh, so at $3 a square foot, that would come in at 3,180. Uh, we also recently had our AHERA three-year reinspection done in Vel Element Environmental helped us with that, and we addressed uh, some issues that we found uh, at Thomas Fitzwater. A couple of none of none of this is in the student areas. This is all back of house uh, custodial areas. We found some tiles starting to to come apart that needs to be removed in the custodial office area off the boiler room. And we also found one asbestos fitting uh, that was sitting on a, a water pipe in a closet. Uh, it's it's getting ready to come down on its own, so we want to grab it before it falls down and make an issue, uh, makes a bigger issue. So we're looking to add everything that we saw during our here three-year reinspection, along with room 210, and the, the change order to this would be $3,820, uh, which would bring our total cost of the project to $15,820. Okay, great. Any questions on this item? Or we'll move that along also. Thank you. Uh, next is the uh, Sandy Run Middle School Organization team update. Mr. Sirota is going to provide that for us. Thank you. So uh, the organization team is the uh, internal team that's working on Sandy Run Facilities Project. Uh, it includes uh, Bob and Brenda, myself and Joe, um, Arif uh, from Dewey Engineering. Um, who am I missing? Art. Oh, doc, uh, doc, yes, Dr. Wheeler and Dr. Clark. Um, and uh, we've been working, uh, meeting approximately every two weeks, uh, and we are ready to move forward with the next big phase of the project. We put out an announcement today soliciting interest from the community uh, in participating in what we're calling the Project Review Committee, which is, will be a committee of approximately 25 people to review the documentation uh, and information that comes out of the organization team, including things like educational specifications, um, site plans, uh, those sorts of things. And we'll be calling for a first meeting on the evening of June 8th and meeting approximately every two weeks um, through the summer uh, for a, a total of, I think we said five meetings, right? four meetings. Uh, we'll also have some tours of the facility um, for the public uh, a couple of times through the summer. Um, and so uh, announcements for that will be coming out soon. 
Uh, and uh, so by the, by the end of the summer, roughly, we hope to have a recommendation from that committee uh, for the board, which will come first, I assume, here to the operations committee, uh, and then for the full board. Great. Any additional comments? Uh, just one reminder to our community. Um, there is information posted in various places on our website. Um, there was a, an email sent out to our listserv today, the community. Also, we have been helped by the township, and they've sent out a listserv. If anyone is interested in submitting a letter of interest in participating on this committee, the deadline for application is May 30th. Great. Thank you. Anything else on this? Thank you. Next is uh, transportation reports, and there's one item, uh, shared, shared student services agreement with Springfield Township School District. For the last five years, we've had a joint services agreement with Springfield Township and um, school, the school district of Springfield Township, and um, we are recommending that we move forward with that. Um, we, in fact, we've already bid diesel for next year for 1718 uh, jointly uh, to receive uh, even a better discount um, for Springfield. And um, it has been proposed, as I th believe I announced last month, that it'd be a 2.5% increase. Um, and currently the agreement uh, is with our solicitor for review. Um, just looking for items that might have changed in code and in law. A few years ago, there was a change regarding um, making sure that all employees and, and folks that would be servicing the students had all of their uh, proper IDs, and that was added at the time. I'm not uh, expecting any substantial changes this year. Okay, any comment or question on this? So this will be something that will be brought forward for legislative? Yes, it will come forward uh, and be voted on, hopefully, <laughs> at the June um, 5th. Uh, legislative meeting. Okay. All right, to move that along? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Thank you Thank very you. much. You're welcome. All right, next it's uh, time for community input. If anyone would like to address the uh, committee, please step to the podium. I don't see anyone coming to the podium, but I do want to make an introduction to the board, if I may. We are joined this evening by Sean Starosta a senior at Upper Dublin High School who, as his community study, is interning with me. He has an interest in public policy, and uh, Sean has been engaging in visits and interviews with um, key members of our organization, looking at our organizational structure, how we function as an organization. Additionally, he has met with some township officials and has some more on tap. This afternoon, we were able to join township manager Paul Leonard, um, police chief Lee Benson, um, and uh, Senator um, Hughes down at the township building. So Sean is having, in week one, he is having a quite a wide-ranging experience. Uh, he will be going with me to a meeting of the board of directors of the Ambler Y next week. So another phase of this is uh, ex exploring interagency collaboration. So Sean, did you want to say something briefly to some members of the board? Hello? <laughs> Hello. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's all I got. Um, uh, yeah. So what I what I've been doing with Dr. Wheeler, as she explained, I have an interesting public policy. Um, so I th I told uh, Dr. Levinitz that I'd be contacting um, board members in the coming weeks and um, asking you guys about your experience in public service and. I, th I thank you in advance. <laughs> so we thank everyone for the collaboration in helping make this a rich experience for Sean. And we look forward to seeing his report when he summarizes his learnings at the end of this process. Sean, I'm sure uh, as a board member, and I can speak for everyone, if, if you have any uh, questions of any of us, we're most happy to talk to you about uh, whatever's on your mind. All right. Okay, um, that concludes the meeting. Um, before we adjourn, I just would like to say that our next meeting is scheduled for Thursday, June 15th, 6 p.m. here in the Cardinal Room. Uh, we may or may not have that meeting, uh, so just uh, stay tuned uh, in case that should be canceled. But uh, at the moment, that is still scheduled. And with that, we are adjourned. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you.